During the French colonial era in 1917 in Senegal, a man named Baycarry was seen herding cows with his son, Thierno. They lived in a very poor village but the people there lived happily and peacefully, until one night, Baycarry got news that the French army was on its way to his village to raid young adults for them to take by force. At that time, the First World War was still happening and France needed a lot of soldiers to fight against Germany. Because of the shortage of soldiers, France forcibly brought young people from the villages of the countries they colonized to be trained as war soldiers. To prevent the village youth from being taken away, Bakary and other fathers planned to take their sons and flee the village before the French army arrived, but unfortunately, their plan was discovered. Farino and the other young men were caught and taken away to the French military training camp located in Senegal. When Bakary returned to the village, he felt guilty and apologized to his wife for failing to protect Thierno. His wife was shocked to hear that her son was taken away but couldn't do anything. Seeing the sadness on his wife's face, Bakary promised that whatever happened, he would bring their son back home. The next day, Beccari went to the French military training camp. He planned to disguise himself as a volunteer who wanted to join the war, and after confirming Thierno's whereabouts inside the camp, Beccari advanced. He was lucky enough to trick the officers by pretending to say he was 30 years old, and after passing several tests, he passed the test and was welcomed into the army. While all the soldiers were sleeping that night, Beccari secretly woke Thierno up and invited the other young men to join him in running away. Unfortunately, their attempt was unsuccessful, as the guards found out about their plan and arrested them. Also, since Bakary and Thierno were considered provocateurs, they were sentenced to one week's imprisonment. When the war training was over a week later, all the soldiers were taken to France only to witness many soldiers had died in the war the moment they arrived. Bakary told Thierno to hide while he was going to find a way to escape. That was when one of the young soldiers named Adam joined in hiding with him. After getting to know each other, the two of them became close. While they were waiting, two senior soldiers approached and loved Thierno. Instead of helping, Adam ran away to save himself. Because he refused to give his money, Thierno was beaten to a pulp, and all of his pocket money was taken. Not long afterward, a sergeant named Salif who happened to be passing by found Thierno lying on the ground and then took Thierno to the bar. After being treated, Thierno was confused to see so many black and white soldiers talking casually with each other, even a person as high as the lieutenant had no problem hanging out with ordinary soldiers. Amid the confusion, a lieutenant named Chambro said hello and explained that there was no hierarchical system in his battalion. All soldiers were at the same level. They fought and died together, and the most important thing was that they would never leave our friends behind. Chambro then offered Thiernov to join his battalion. Upon hearing that, just to be safe, so that he wouldn't be bullied by senior soldiers again, Thierno accepted the offer. On the other hand, Beccari was trying to change divisions to become a kitchen division. But when he met the head of the kitchen and explained his purpose, the head of the kitchen said that it would cost him 30 euros to be a kitchen worker, and since Bakary didn't have that kind of money, the head of the kitchen threw him out and told him to come back when he got the money. At that very moment, a bomb attack from the German Air Force suddenly shook the building. The soldiers hurriedly lined up waiting for instructions. Bakary came over and told Thierno about his plans to move to the kitchen division, but when he found out that all of his son's money had been taken away by someone, Bakary felt weak. Not long after, the captain arrived and gave the command while explaining that the next sunrise would be the time for them to carry out a surprise attack. If they succeeded in defeating Germany's last defense in the hilly area, France would definitely win the war. After giving instructions, all the troops left. Arriving at the battlefield, the soldiers hid in the trenches all night waiting for the sunrise and when the time finally came, Chambro immediately told his troops to get ready. Bakary, who was afraid, told Thierno and Adam to pray together before the war. While waiting for the command, Beccari continued to worry about Thierno. He didn't care if France won or lost because all he thought about was his son's safety. But when Chambro gave the command, the soldiers were forced to start their attack. The French side was bombarded with bombs and bullets. Sadly, Adam was hit by explosives and died. Seeing his friend die before his own eyes made Thierno filled with anger, and with his war cry, he ran to attack. Beccari saw him and tried to catch him, hoping he could stop him before things went ugly. Thankfully, he managed to catch him and hold him. The French troops failed and were forced to retreat. As a result of the defeat, many soldiers ended up dying. Seeing his soldiers in despair, Chambro tried to encourage them as they had to remain alert until help arrived. He then told Thierno to be on guard, scouting the enemy's movements. The next morning, without the knowledge of anyone, Beccari and Thierno slowly crawled to secure Adam's body for burial. And after they finished burying and praying for Adam, when they were about to return to the trench, Bakary accidentally saw money in one of the soldiers' bodies, and because he really needed the money, though the guilt, Bakary took it. 
In the afternoon after the aide arrived, the troops returned to headquarters, and upon arrival at the headquarters, Bekeri rushed to look for the head of the kitchen division, but when he asked, one of the workers told him that the position of head of the kitchen had been taken over by a white person. He also said that since the white guy replaced the head of the kitchen, black people had been oppressed like slaves. Bekeri felt weak. The only hope of avoiding war was lost. On the other side at the bar, Chambro called Thierno and asked him to replace the corporal who died on the battlefield. And even though he wanted to refuse because it was an order from his superiors, like it or not, Therino was forced to accept the position. He then told his father about his new position and his dilemma since if he served as a corporal, his father would automatically be a subordinate who had to obey his orders, but Beccari didn't have a problem as long as his son was safe. He was willing to be his subordinate as long as Therino could return home safely. Therino was happy to hear that. The next morning after officially serving as corporal, Therino was given a new uniform with a red barret on his arm. When he wore the shirt, he felt very proud. It was the first time in his life that he had achieved something. He didn't expect that a young man from a poor village could become a corporal. That night before sleep, Beccari and Thierno, who missed home, talked to each other while imagining the fun of joking around the family at home. In the middle of the conversation, Thierno felt worried about his mother and sister since they were not home and nobody was on their side. Beccari fell silent and contemplated that in his mind. The next morning when the soldiers were practicing, Therino began to give commands, but when he saw his father caught in barbed wire and injured and wanted to help, Salif forbade him. Salif reminded him that no matter how difficult the conditions were, a soldier must be able to be independent. He also told Therino to be harder with their subordinate. The corporal must not be soft. So that their relationship was not discovered, Therino was forced to scold his father and order him to crawl again. Even though he was offended by his own son's order, Bekeri still complied. In the afternoon after being treated, Bekeri secretly sneaked out of the base to find a way home. When checking residents' houses, he accidentally met a soldier named Barama. When Barama found out that Bekeri was planning to escape, he invited him to work together. They hid and told each other the reason why they wanted to run away, and because they had something in common, the two became close. At night, Therano came to apologize to his father for his impudent behavior this morning. Seeing his son's sincerity, Bekeri forgave him. After that, Therano explained the latest conditions on the battlefield and told his father that the only way to return home was to win the war and there was no other choice. He asked his father to understand and stop acting recklessly. As a corporal, he promised to protect him until the war was over so they could go home together, but Bakery refused since the risk was too big. He wasn't sure they could survive, and if one of them died, everything would be in vain. From the start, their goal was to go home, not war. He was not willing if one of them had to sacrifice his life just to defend France, which had colonized their country for years. They both argued until Beck Curry was fed up with his son's behavior and kicked him out. Therno then went to the bar to calm down. There he met Chambro. While drinking, the two discussed strategies for seizing the German defense. Chambro felt that France's defeat yesterday was definitely because of their direct attack, and so that wouldn't happen again. Chambro planned to change tactics. He wanted to create a special squad of 10 soldiers that would later move separately to take over the enemy's communications post. If they succeeded in disrupting enemy communications, only then they could destroy their defenses easily. Chambro then ordered Thierno to join the special squad he created. After discussing the strategy, Thierno hung out with the other corporals. On the other hand, Beccari watched his son from the window. He realized that his son had changed. His son who used to be a good child had become a disobedient child. He felt failed as a father. The next night, in the middle of heavy rain, the French troops prepared to attack the German defense in the hilly area. According to plan, all the soldiers waited for the signal in the trench, while ten selected soldiers including Chambro, Salif, and Thierno moved quietly towards the enemy communication post. Seeing Thierno leaving, Beccari was very worried. After waiting for hours because Thierno still had not returned, Beccari desperately followed. He tried to crawl his way to the German defense, but his journey was stopped when he saw a fox trapped in a barbed wire. He tried to help it, and when it managed to escape, he smiled happily, hoping that he and his son too could be free and go home. When Bakari returned to the trench, Birama told him that he had an acquaintance, a soldier in charge of transporting the dead soldiers, who was willing to help him escape as long as they paid a high price. In the middle of the chat, Chambro and the other soldiers returned. It turned out that they all failed and were forced to retreat. When Bakari found out that Therano was left behind, he was so angry that he wanted to beat up Chambro. Not long afterward, Therano fortunately appeared unharmed carrying Salif who had been shot. Unfortunately, Salif's life could not be saved. On the other hand, because he had dared to fight against his superior, Bakari was sentenced to confinement. Chambro called Therano to his room and said he already knew that Bakari was Therano's father. 
Theranos panicked, but luckily, Chambro didn't mind. He understood it was normal for Beccari to be angry because he was worried about his son. But in war, Beccari's overprotectiveness could endanger other soldiers, so like it or not, Chambro was forced to separate Beccari from his battalion. When Theranos heard that decision, he could only remain silent. The next morning, upon returning to headquarters, since they didn't have a surgeon in their battalion, Theranos was appointed to replace Salif. Meanwhile, in another place, Beccari and Barama were seen planning to steal money in the kitchen. After lurking for a long time, when the kitchen workers left, the two of them started to search, but the kitchen workers returned and found them red-handed. They had no other choice but to fight and kill the witnesses. They both managed to escape to the hiding place. While Barama was counting the stolen money, Beccari was shocked. It was the first time in his life that he stole from someone. In the afternoon during the break, Theurno and the other soldiers chatted with each other about their plans after the war ended. Most wanted to continue being French soldiers because they were sure of their future there rather than going back to the village, but Thierno wasn't interested. Despite the very tempting salary as a surgeon, going home and hanging out with his family was much more fun. The next morning, Bakary, who was suspicious that Thierno would act recklessly like yesterday, secretly sneaked into Chambro's office. While eavesdropping on the meeting, his suspicion was correct. Thierno, along with Chambro and the other corporals, were planning to take over the enemy's communications post once again. They also formed another special team. After hearing about Chambro's plan because he didn't want his son to get involved, Beccari immediately prepared a way to escape before the war started that night. In the afternoon after the preparations were finished, Beccari invited Thierno to escape using a corpse transport cart. If they successfully passed the guards, they just needed to go to the port and get on a ship back to Africa. Somehow, Thierno didn't want to come. He wasn't sure they would make it safely to the port because the port was also heavily guarded by the French army. Seeing his son's attitude, Beccari had no other choice but to force him to comply. They then rushed to get on the cart that had been prepared and were lucky enough to pass the guard post without the slightest suspicion. But after leaving the base far enough and stopping, Beccari was surprised to find Thierno wasn't there. A soldier taking them told him that Thierno had jumped out and returned to headquarters long before they stopped. When Beccari heard that, he was worried, afraid that Thierno would join the attack. Beccari told Barama to continue his journey while he would return to headquarters to follow his son. When night fell on the battlefield, Therano was seen with Chambro and the corporals, getting ready to ambush the German communications post while the remaining soldiers hid in the trenches, waiting for the signal to attack. When everyone was ready, they advanced. On the other hand, when Bakery reached the headquarters and heard that Chambro had started the attack, he panicked then hurriedly followed. When approaching the enemy communication post, Beccari many victims fell. And even though he only had a knife to save his son, he dared himself to infiltrate. Fortunately, he managed to reach the post, eliminate some of the guards, and free Thierno and Chambro at the same time. But when he wanted to take Thierno away, Chambro forbade him while pointing a gun and threatening to shoot if he went against his order, because whatever happened, the mission must continue. Beccari didn't care and just continued to go with Thierno, but in the middle of running away, he was sadly shot. Seeing his father injured, Therano tried to help him stand up, but because the bullet penetrated Beccari's vital organs, he could no longer stand. In a dying condition, Beccari still thought about his son. He told his son to return home to his mother who had been waiting for him day and night. When he heard his father's words, Therano cried and hugged him, and even though it hurt, he had no other choice but to leave his father. Seeing Therano's departure, Beccari could only pray that his son could be free from the cruelty of the war. A few days later, after France managed to win the war, Thierno was given a medal for his services in defending France, but he didn't look happy at all at that moment. He could only cry while remembering how big a sacrifice his father had made for him. When the month passed, Thierno finally came home. His mother immediately hugged him tightly as he arrived, but when she found out that her husband had died in the war, she and her daughter were sad. While hugging his younger sibling, Thierno said that their father didn't die in vain. He died as a hero for his children. Therna promised that from now on, he would be the one who would look after the family in place of his father.